Okay, for the sea otter dress-up activity, here are some suggested items. Of course, you can be creative as needed, uh, but here's what we're using today, and uh, just hopefully this will give you an idea of how you could use this activity with your kids. Uh, they could even come up with their own costumes. It could be super fun. We have basically a fur suit. This one happens to have a hood on it, sort of a poncho shape, so it's easy to put on to the student. That's handy. Uh, novelty wig, just for comedic effect really, but just additional hair. And the fur is of course trapping a layer of air around the sea otter's body. That's what the bubble wrap represents. Then we have the sea otter's paws. Now, these are not critical. Uh, mittens would work great. It's just the idea that they don't have long skinny fingers like we do, something more like a paw, but they are able to use them uh, pretty effectively uh, to groom themselves. That's what the comb is all about. So we have this oversized comb. That's great to represent grooming. Novelty thermometer to represent them being warm-blooded and keeping themselves warm. Then for swimming, we have some small fins. Whatever works, these just basically need to push onto the toes of your student uh, to represent those rear flippers of the sea otter. Once they're swimming, of course, they need to be able to see. So their eyes are adapted for seeing underwater. A pair of swim goggles for that. Their whiskers are very important. We have a little novelty nose just from a party store. Uh, you could make whiskers out of pipe cleaners or whatever, uh, just to represent those very sensitive whiskers on their face. Some kind of food item. We've got a little plastic crab, but whatever you could find that's some sort of ocean creature that a sea otter might eat. Clam, mussel, could be a paper version of one of those if need be, but the crab is handy. And then just to review the basic characteristics of mammals, we have a mylar balloon for a lung. We have a little baby for a live baby and a humongous bottle, again, for comedic effect, but to remind kids that all mammal moms feed their babies milk. All right, so now that we have uh, the pieces of the sea otter costume, I'm actually gonna show you how we would use that to describe sea otter adaptations. And this is just a fun way to turn a child into a sea otter and a great way to sort of immerse them into the idea that animals' bodies are similar to ours, but we have these special features, these adaptations that make us very different. And sea otters have some really unique ones that allow them to survive out there in the ocean. Uh, behind us, incidentally, these are seals, uh, not sea otters at all, but it's way more fun than a classroom to be teaching in front of these seals. So we're gonna be out here in front of our ringed seals and the spotted seal. All right, so let's see how we're gonna turn Caitlin here into a sea otter. First of all, she doesn't have nearly enough fur. Sea otters are covered in a thick layer of fur with millions and millions of hairs. So we're gonna surround Caitlin with fur and uh, let's get her a little bit more, just as much hair as we can possibly get Caitlin. And the idea of the fur, of course, is that the sea otter will use it to trap a layer of air around their body. So we've got this bubble wrap that's representing the air that is trapped in their fur and helping to keep them warm. Well, that only works if the sea otter can do a good job of grooming their fur. So uh, they don't have long skinny fingers like us. They have little paws but they are able to use those paws very effectively to groom their fur, as Caitlin's demonstrating now. So uh, grooming is extremely important for a sea otter. They need to be able to keep that fur nice and clean. And as long as they do, that will trap that layer of air around their body, thus keeping them nice and warm. Thank you for the demonstration, Caitlin. Okay, so now that Caitlin's nice and warm, we're gonna send our sea otter out into the ocean. And of course, she will need to be able to swim. With those front paws, she's not gonna be a very good swimmer. So in the back, sea otters have flippers. So we're gonna give Caitlin some little flippers here, just on the back. So she only has rear flippers. And that's a little different from these seals where you'll see flippers in the front and the back. Again, these sea otters' paws in the front are super important for them to be able to care for themselves. They're also really important for collecting food. That's, of course, what she's going to spend most of her time underwater doing, is finding food and gathering it. How does she find it? 
She has eyes that are adapted for seeing underwater. Super important. But in times when it's super dark out there, she will use her whiskers to find her way around. So our sea otter has very sensitive whiskers right next to her nose. And these whiskers will help her feel around in the water. They feel the vibrations of the water itself. Once she has found her food, she's going to collect it with her paws. And then she'll get back up to the surface and eat her food however she needs to. Of course, sometimes they'll use a little rock to crack it open. Sometimes they just tear it apart. Uh, it just depends on the type of food. And sometimes they just literally eat the whole thing. Clams and mussels, for example, they just crush them with their teeth. So now we have our well-fed sea otter. Just a quick reminder of the basic characteristics of mammals. They have hair. Check. We got plenty of that. They're warm-blooded. Got it. They breathe air. If you want to demonstrate that, use that balloon. You could use two of them if you'd like to represent the lungs, breathing air. And live babies. If you want to represent the live baby that your little marine mammal could have, there we go, tiny stuffed animal of whatever sort you have. And then just a quick reminder that all mammal moms feed their babies milk. So let's give Caitlin a big round of applause. Very good. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you have fun using this activity with your students.